Welcome back to another episode of Anime Rumi, where we have fun talking about anime and other Japanese media. This is our second episode, and the members include myself, Touch of Sweet and Sour Yellow, Yuzu. I'm Lovely Lively Pink, Sakura. I'm your Blue Ranger, One san Yuri. Peppy and Sunny is Orange, Mikang. We'll be hanging out with these members today. Yoroshikune! Yoroshiku! Yoroshiku! Yoroshiku. <laughs> and on the topic of anime, was there anything you watched last week, Sakura? Um, well, I had the honor of going to go see Belle in mm. theaters. Um, Mamoru Hosada san. I know it's like reversed, but his movies are genuinely like the coolest things, I would definitely say. Because, like, I know I watched like Wolf Children. Oh. And oh my God, such a tearjerker. Mm-hmm. But- I know. I also just recently watched Belle too. And mm. I really like it. <laughs> didn't the music like slap? Like, wasn't it? Yeah, the best? I, I really liked it, and like, I really liked how they, I guess, like, used three D animation and two D animation. The way they used it in the movie was really interesting. I really liked it. If you guys haven't watched it yet, I definitely recommend watching it. Mm-hmm. To be honest, I'm on the fence as far as his other directorial work. Some of it I liked a lot. Mm-hmm. Some of it really didn't hit home for me. So I've been sort of. Would you mind telling us which ones were like? Um, I really liked Summer Wars, and I really liked The Girl Who Leapt Through Time a lot. If you liked those, his go see ones Bell. Kind of <laughs> oh, Heck, if you like the Digimon movie he directed, then <laughs> you should probably go see it. It's that good. Yeah, I think if you like Summer Wars, though, it starts off with a similar concept. Obviously, the story is different, but. It's like the concept of, oh, there is another society within a virtual world, and like these two characters and their hardship in that world. Mm-hmm. It also like relates to them, like IRL. It's a good movie. I really liked it. And like the animation was super pretty, of course, you know. Yeah, the character design, like I've seen like a little bit of the images of the characters and stuff, and I thought like they're very pretty and like designed mm-hmm. really well. Yeah, I really like the yeah. design. It definitely think, looks like, beautiful. In comparison to like his older work, like you really do see like the Western influence in the character design this for this movie for sure. Like um, I was talking to some people who actually seen it before I did, and they're like, "Wow, it had a real Pixar feel to it." And <laughs> I feel like that kind of stuff is like really what like really tickles like the American audience of like a Western animation mm-hmm. otaku is also welcome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like Disney, freaking. <laughs> you know, I've mentioned in our first episode how much I loved um, Yasuhiro Naito's work, Trigon and Blood Blockade Battlefront, and that is a creator whose affection for Western stories and comics and media is well known and is so clear in his stuff. And the blend of influences only makes it that much more interesting. So creators that can do that well typically put out work that I really, really enjoy. Mm-hmm. One question for Sakura and Mikan. Mm-hmm. Which did you like better, Belle or The Boy and the Beast? The one he did right before that. Uh, I hate to say it, but I still haven't seen it. I can't get my hands oh, on it because okay. I didn't see it in theaters. I don't know because I love The Boy and the Beast because one, the soundtrack, and then of course the story. I think it's kind of a hard comparison just because it's a pretty different story. Well, that's good. That's a plus in my book. The way that I think it carries out is also pretty different. Like, not just like the setting. It might be something that can't really be compared, but I think if you liked it, and if you liked the other girl who left through time and you liked Summer Wars, I think you'll definitely like this one. It's definitely got his like classic touch, but with like a new spin. Yeah, you sold me. Uh, that I think that's worth risking a movie ticket, even if I end up not loving it. Yeah, it, it's still a good movie. Like, yeah. mm-hmm. and hey, if nothing else, it looks beautiful and the music's good. So yeah, exactly. The dub soundtrack—it's way better than I thought it would ever be. Oh. I just wanted to say that. <laughs> oh really? I watched yeah, the dub, dub so. The vocalist or the voice actor that they had is also the vocalist for the English one, right? 
or the English voice actor is the English vocalist. The thing is, is that she's brand new, straight off the presses. Like she hasn't done anything other like huge than this movie. And it's, you can see it. There's like a natural, like a unrefined diamond in the rough kind of feel to it for sure. Oh, I gave it a listen on Spotify and I'm like, wait a minute, what is this? (laughs) I remember what, listening to um, Oran High School's ending and being like, yeah, that's Uh... not it. And then (laughs) this, I'm like, wow, they're really stepping up a production game. Nice. Well, sometimes, you know, like the diamond in the rough is like really, someone who turns out to have a massive amount of talent like um Kana Ichinose in Darling in the Franks uh, I think that was her first role and she ended up being one of the best parts of the show <laughs> someone who had only like one or two other roles to her name yeah so that's encouraging all right well you're sure gonna hear my opinions on it after I see it um so yeah that's me and Mikan's uh recommendation to go see Belle in theaters if you can and if you can't get it on blu-ray the legal way of watching it. Anime Rumi. To celebrate the start of Anime Rumi, we received our first comment. Oh, oh yeah. From you like us. Exciting. You really like us. <laughs> oh, who could it be? Who could it be? Well, let's find out. Hello, everyone. I'm Tenma Yuki as Momomiya Ichigo in Anime Tokyo Mew Mew Mew. Anime Rumi, Haishin Start, Omedeto Gosaimas. Tokyo Mew Mew New は今年7月に放送スタートです。海外のファンの方に向けていろんな情報をお届けできたらと思っているので楽しみにしていてください。それでは、桃宮いちご役、天馬ゆうきでした。See you soon! Oh my god, that was so cute! So that was y u k i t e n m a s a n right? Who is the role of いちご桃宮 in Tokyo Mew Mew New. Thank you so much for the comment. That was like I'm so excited to like have heard that, <laughs> especially for our first time. For our first comment, we got someone who's like, That's a big get. No, yeah, so big. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my goodness. No. Crazy cute. The only oh God, thing so cute. cuter than her doing her interviews and her performances in Smoothie in Japanese is the comment in English. She uh-huh. sounds yeah. even no. more adorable speaking English somehow. Oh my goodness. Precious. It's like put her oh. on the dub cast. <laughs> Comment is like a little piece of treasure. That was so cute. It was really cute. Oh. I love her voice. It's like perfect, especially for the role of Mom and the mm-hmm. Ichigo. Mom yeah. <laughs> She does make a wonderful Ichigo. She mm-hmm. um, really does. It's like that innocence in her voice is mm-hmm. just like mm-hmm. right I up know. there. It like it matches it so well. <laughs> So, we received a comment from Miyuki Tenma-san, who will be in Tokyo Mew Mew New, which will start airing in July. I'm looking forward to hearing upcoming details about the anime. Yeah, so am I as well. And luckily, you can take a little bit of a look behind the scenes and see the development of Tenma-chan, of、uh, Yuki Tenma, that is, and the other members of the Tokyo Mew Mew cast group, which is called Smoothie, like Smoothie plus、so、Mew.、Cute. Like, it just keeps getting orders of magnitude cuter and cuter all the time as a way of building excitement towards the show. Just very, very recently, this is like breaking anime r u m i news. Did any of you see the Tokyo Mew Mew anime preview video yet? Because、yes. I have、yes. so many things、yes. to say about it. I have. Oh my, oh my god. It my was so、stopped. cute. So, I feel actually, like, yeah, I, I agree. It was really cute. I feel like it kept a lot of like. The essence of like the original anime,、mm-hmm. but it, it was still kind of like glammed up and all cutesy in a modern way at the same time. I'm just, oh my god, I'm so excited. It's, <laughs> it's, it's really, really like the best、home. of both worlds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been a while since I've immediately seen a trailer for a new show and felt like so much excitement right away.、Mm-hmm. Um, because it looks foremost, it looks amazing, but it also has. Like a very classical style to it. It's not、yeah. a complete modernization of the original manga. It's like the spirit of what made the first adaptation special、mm-hmm. is still、mm-hmm. there. It's just the level on everything has been turned up. Yeah. And then, like, yeah. the, the trailer, like, for sure had, like, that saving the world kind of、mm-hmm. like, in a world, but, like, you know, <laughs> magical and perfect.、Yeah. But, you know, like, oh my gosh. Like, all the voice actors, too. I actually don't know who it was, but, like, 
one of the guys' voices towards oh, the yes. mid, like towards the middle, and it's like, what is it? Like the maid, like the, not maid, but like butler <laughs> voice. Butler-ish. I was like, I need to know who this is. Oh. <laughs> I don't know who it was, but it, I was like, that's like Ikebo. I was like, oh, I need to know who this is. <laughs> It's like insane app idea. Find the voice actor. Like Spotify. Or what is it called? SoundCloud, SoundHound or whatever? Oh, Shazam. Shazam it. Yeah, uh, Shazam, but for voice actor voice. Yeah, I the that voice actor. Actor. Follow that same. <laughs> write it down. Write it down, Patrick. Oh. So we received a comment from Yuki Tenma-san, who will be in Tokyo Mimu New, which will start airing in July. I'm looking forward to hearing upcoming details about the anime. And again, from all the roomies, thank you so much for the comment. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. We have a lot of topics centered around anime ready, so let's dive into it. So we have different topics written on some cards, and we're going to choose and find out uh, what we'll be talking about today. Oh. Uh, what number do, should we, we do? Magic um, card. We have <laughs> one to five, a choice of cards numbered from one to five. Peace. Two. Victory. Two. Um, okay. All right, yeah, let's go. Okay. Let's My lucky okay. number is yeah. three, but oh. I'm, I will go with the roomy consensus. What's on okay. two? <laughs> Oh, okay. So the um, topic that we got was anime sanctuary you want to visit. So I think by sanctuary, this means more like anime sites and locations they used as like a reference uh, for an anime. A pilgrimage. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Going back to the first episode, I talked about Natsume Yuzin Jo being like one of my comfort shows. And I know that there was like a place in somewhere in like the rural side of Japan that was actually used to like create that story. I don't know where it is though, but I, I want, I'd want to go there, maybe. I've actually been oh. visiting once. Um, not for the Nats of but uh, yeah. uh, when I was into Yuri on Ice, mm. I went to Karatsu. Mm-hmm. Oh, nice. When I was in Japan and I had like Katsudon, <gasps> you know, <laughs> and like the onsen that it's like set in. Can I ask and, you a question? Me too. Yeah. Did you have like those like little dolls that people like have and then when they like go to the sites they take pictures with the dolls like I didn't have the doll. Oh. oh but it was I've, hilarious I've done because that a time or two. I went there <laughs> and then that onsen had like all these like pop-ups basically mm. and oh. like life life-size statues. I was like at the shoten guy, like the shopping mm-hmm. district, cool. and they were selling like Yuri's like clothes or like. Aww. Things like that. <laughs> yeah. so was it funny. was it an old school shoten guy with the roof and it's like yeah. the path? And, yeah. Oh, I love. And those. it was like kind of dim, kind of narrow, mm-hmm. sort of disappearing part of Japan as like Western style malls are taking over. It's nice mm-hmm. to see that like little remnant of culture still left. Yeah. And I was like, cool, because it's just like the scene that I seen in like the anime is just like there. And I was like, what? Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> but I think like one I want to visit right now, it was the one for like Kimi no Nawa. You know that <gasps> yeah. one staircase? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, is that real? Where is I, that? Yeah. I, um, uh, somewhere in Tokyo. Oh, wow. But mm-hmm. I just, I feel like it's just so iconic now. Yeah. Now that you say that, I'm pretty sure there was a movie that had a staircase that looked so similar. It was um, Hirokazu Koreeda, who is um, a director of live action film that I like a lot. He did a movie set in that area of Tokyo. And there were a couple of scenes on that staircase that made me go, that looks just like the one in Kimi no Nawa. Oh. Our homework for next time, we're going to find out where that staircase <laughs> was <laughs> in the location yeah. because that would be mm. a cool coincidence. Um, I've done a lot of onsen-based pilgrimage uh, site visitations. Um, I've been both to Hakone, which was not in its current form, but in a like contemporary fantasy form was the setting for... Neon Genesis Evangelion. Oh. Um, except it hasn't been destroyed. It's just got a lot of beautiful motion. <laughs> and oh, I also... The giant ray in the water. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's beautiful without that. There is a boat you can ride around in that looks like an old-fashioned pirate ship. 
Ooh, um, oh. Highly recommend it, as I also recommend that you go to Matsuyama and Ehime and see Dogo Onsen. Everyone knows Dogo Onsen as the Spirited Away mm. uh, <gasps> bathhouse basis. And mm. it is that beautiful in real life. But that's not even the only great onsen in that area. If you like the whole onsen culture of Japan, then Matsuyama was just like heaven on earth. Oh my gosh, there were more wonderful onsen than I could possibly visit. I must have gone to a dozen, and there are still three times that many. Can I add on to this? So there's a、uh, place in Beppu that has like a bunch of onsen.、Oh. And、mm-hmm. the hills? Had- Yeah, yeah, the, the hell is right. And then if you go, you can have some like really good, like steam boiled, like eggs and like imo. It's so good.、Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm just、uh, talking about onsen、no. is rid- rid- onsen imo. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I'm not a big egg fan, so I always skip the onsen tamago, but onsen imo sounds great.、Yeah. Sounds I think it was t a s t y Me, I think this is a really old one, and I don't know if the building's still there, but like. Back to like the Digimon movie,、um, the Mamoru Hosada Digimon movie, there's、um, like a scene where you can see the Fuji Broadcasting Center.、Uh-huh. Um, it's this, <laughs> these two buildings with like these kind of like connects kind of thing coming across with like a sphere. There's a sky、middle. bridge. Yeah, 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 yeah.、Mm-hmm. So、um, back when I、um, had lived、oh. in Japan,、um, I would see that building visiting my grandparents' house. And so I've always wanted to go. And I had the、mm. one chance of going to a Chinese food place at the bottom of the building、um, or something like that. And so I just, I'd love to go again. That's one、oh, of those places. Yes, I, I mean, I, oh, Akiba. Then Akiba. Who hasn't been to Akiba? Like watching、um, Oreimo,、uh, mm. was it My Little Sister's Otaku show? Like watching that and like going to visit Japan after <laughs> watching that made me feel like, oh, this is a real play. Oh, there's all these things that exist. Like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> It was amazing to me. I was just like, wow, this is like、That's、mega.、Funny. I didn't mention、anime. what was on my to do list, but、um, I've somehow. Always wanted to, but never managed to go see Juban, Tokyo, where Sailor Moon is set and where、uh, oh. Naoko Takeuchi, the author of Sailor Moon, grew up. So, a couple of those places,、mm-hmm. I don't think it's like 100% the same as the anime, but I know the Hikawa Shrine where Rei was a Miko definitely does exist. So, I, I do enjoy doing the temple and shrine rounds, so I'd love to do that. A nice thing about being a fan of Blood Blockade Battlefront is that I've been able to do anime pilgrimages、mm. within the US because a lot of it's set in like a very painstakingly <laughs> realistic New York City. It's,、yeah. it's so fun. I wish LA got that kind of love. <laughs> you'd, think, you'd think there would be more LA set anime, but is Banana Fish?、Yeah. Banana Fish is set in California, isn't it? Yeah, it actually,、Chicago? oh, I'm not sure, actually. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's <laughs> more homework. homework. Yeah. I feel like it's Chicago. So, I know this is like really, really way off topic, but there's this one movie that I love watching and I own it on YouTube and it's called LA Plays Itself. And it's essentially this conversation we're having right now, but it's basically an old director going through all the times, like these specific. Monuments or like locations in LA、oh, have been used、dude. in film industry. And like, because I go to LA like every every once in a while, I kind of see those places and I'm like, oh wow, that's like the um the Angels Rise thingy, the little stair lift thing. I know it's not a stair lift, it's like a little cabin thing that goes up into the hill next to the、oh, uh, Japanese yeah, yeah, yeah. embassy. It's like right by that building.、Mm-hmm. um Those kinds of things, like, I'm super into like. Architecture、mm-hmm. and stuff when it comes to like movies、mm-hmm. and making things happen and stuff like that. It's like kind <laughs> of small wavelength shift into that. <laughs> no, it's, it's exciting seeing something from your home country pop up in anime is just like such a special feeling. The more、mm-hmm. faithfully、mm-hmm. recreated it is, the more you go, oh wow. So, thank you for sharing your,、um, like、your experience with that, the, the sanctuary, visiting anime sanctuaries, Mikan. It was like, really interesting, and I think I also want to do that now.、Uh, it was really fun talking about these places, and I think these like, cards are really fun to do, and I, I can't wait to do some, pull some more cards and see what the different topics are.
was it for everybody else today? Making my travel plans as we speak. Sometime in the future. Sometime in the future. <laughs> the roommate pilgrimage tour coming mm-hmm. hopefully soon. <laughs> <laughs> now, for me, it's just like one of those things where it's like either nostalgia makes me want to go somewhere again or like the feeling of like discovering something I haven't even fathomed was a real thing. It's definitely kind of like a discovery kind of feeling for me. And this kind of anime tourism is really wonderful for a lot of the places that people go to visit, especially when they're in less populated prefectures or rural areas or places that are more out of the way. So it's reciprocal. A lot of them love having otaku visitors as much as we love going. Love having the gaijin come in with all the <laughs> with all their anime stuff. So we could probably talk about you know, visiting these places forever, but I think it's time to wrap up. And um, I think this is a lot of fun being able to talk with you guys about this today. And yeah, I am looking forward to the other topics that we pull next week. So we have a Twitter account and website for Anime Roomie, so please check that out if you have time. And you can um, ask us any questions, comments, or reach out to us about any um, anime pilgrimage you've actually taken at hashtag Anime Roomie. And thanks for tuning in. We hope to see you again next time. Bye-bye, Roomie. Bye-bye, Roomie. Bye-bye, Roomie. Bye-bye, Roomie.